Thank you, Father. Let's just lift our hands one more time. Lift our hands and give him glory for who he is. For who he is. He wants to reveal himself to you today. He wants to, he wants you to see who he is today. Let us embrace that. Father, we thank you for who you are. And, and just say it in your own words. Just say, Father, I thank you for who you are. You are Alpha. You are Omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are the first and the last. You are everything to me. You are everything to me. Come on, say it in your own words. Say, Lord, you are. You are everything to me. You are everything. Oh God. And everything is you. I thank you, Lord. Everything was made by you and for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. This is a good time to shout. Hey! Joey, can you keep something planned for us? I feel in the atmosphere the need to release just the faith of God. Faith of God. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for, then who can be? We serve a strong God. <laughs> We serve a mighty God. There's nothing that he can't do. Oh, Shandaro Masia. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Come on. The same power that raised Lazarus. Come on, church. Woo! Hallelujah. Why don't we just give him a shout this morning? Hallelujah. Oh. Jesus, you're mighty, you're a warrior. <laughs> you bring us victory. <laughs> oh. All things are possible. All things are possible when we believe. All things. Not just some of them, but all things are possible when you believe. Anybody had anything this morning? See, some of you, we want to preach a real message. Some of you fought to get here this morning. Anybody did that? Some of you, your mind might have been messing with you this morning. And some of you, it might have been the traffic. And some of you, it might have just been the enemy saying, oh, well, you don't need to do this and you don't need to go to church. But you hear and all things are possible. Whatever you're facing this morning, all things are possible to them that believe. Really. All things we were, we were waiting on some transactions to take place, and we have a, a testimony because the, it was like one thing or another, and they kept saying, out of all of these years, we've never had this happen before. They said, your, your banking transaction got lost, and it went to Arizona. <laughs> With the break zone. 
And I'm saying, oh, but God. But God. They said, we never had that to happen before. And then they said, we're going to have to wait until the banking transaction comes back. And they said, because we can't reissue you another one until this one comes back. But God. They said, we're going to go ahead and release your transaction. Because this is not something we normally do. This never happened in the history of the place. So we release your transaction. You should have it by 12 o'clock. Three, three business days, by the way. Three days. See, see, all things are possible. When you believe, Janice gave me a, a word. She texted me about two months ago, and she said, I see you like a bulldog, and you're holding on to this thing, and that's exactly what we have been holding on for. Some stuff we had working on, we were waiting on them to finish it. And I'm like, it doesn't take this long. You know, maybe it's just my business mind. I'm thinking, it doesn't take this long to do these processes. <laughs> I need you to scoot, 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 scoot. Hurry up. You know, anybody been like that? Probably just me, but <laughs> it's okay. So, <laughs> um, and, and then they said, out of all of the history, three different, three different people said we've never in our history had that happened before. See, when God, when you release faith, when you release the faith of God over any situation, your faith is working on your behalf. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Now, I know my money went to Arizona, but I know the enemy going to bring my money back. Come on. So I'm hoping in hopes I'm releasing faith that God is going to bring my, come on. So this morning, if you got something that appears that the enemy has shifted in another direction and it's yours, I just want you to lift your hands up in there and say, give me back my stuff. Come on, give me back my stuff right now. Yeah, bring it back right now. You, you have a hold on it. You don't have any power and authority. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. I want to release that because there's a hope with faith this morning. We want to release to the body. See, in order to have faith, you got to have hope. I I'm hoping, I'm hoping because hope is inside of me. I'm believing because belief is inside of me. I'm hoping, I'm believing. You're going to do it, God. You're going to do what you said you're going to do. Because why? How do I apply faith? I'm reading your word. You said in your word that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm believing in my spirit. I know without a shadow of a doubt. That I know, that I know if you release a word to me, that you have to fulfill the word that you promised. So if God's promised you something this morning, we want to release faith. There's a songwriter, she wrote a song that says, faith come alive in the inside of me. I want to release that over this body this morning. Faith come alive on the inside of us. Faith come alive this morning on the inside of us. Faith just rise up, just take over this morning. Come on. Faith, faith, faith. The faith to believe, the faith to stand, the faith that moves mountains. The faith that shakes and says, I won't move until I see you. Bless me, Jacob. The faith that says, yes, I might have to walk with a limp because I'm holding on until you bless me. Anybody been there before? I'm holding on until you bless me. So the faith, the faith to believe, the faith to go to my word and say, God, you said, this is what you said. You said it, therefore I receive it, therefore I believe it. The faith that says I can turn the axe and say, you raised the dead. 
I can release it. It's coming to me because faith says that you'll do it. Faith says you stand watching to perform your word. Faith says all I got to do is open my Bible. Memorizing the inside of me, all I have to do is physically profess the word of God. This is what you said. Your word says you don't lie. Your word says that you're going to fulfill everything that you said you would. So we want to release faith this morning. Faith to come alive. Let's, let's pray. Father, touch every heart this morning. Touch every mind this morning. Touch every ear this morning. Father, let faith arise. Let the faith of God, faith of the Spirit, Father, let faith arise. Let faith arise in us, God. Let it explode in us, Father. Take us to a new level, believing in you, believing who you are, believing your word. Faith, faith, come alive. Faith, come alive. Faith, come alive. Faith, come alive. Faith, come alive alive this morning. Oh, we bind up any hopelessness. We bind up any depression. We bind up any delay and hindrances. And we release the faith of God this morning. Faith to believe without a shadow of a doubt that we know, that we know, that we know that you are our God, you're our strong tower, and that you bring us victory in every situation. So the testimony is that we got victory. We got the victory. Hebrews 11, 1. If you'll turn there with me, if you have a physical Bible, or if you have an electronic Bible, or if you have a tablet or whatever your preference is. I want to read it in the Amplified just because We feel like the need to amplify things up. Um, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for. Believing the proof of things we do not see and the confidence of their reality. Faith perceiving as a real fact which is not revealed to the senses. Mm. For by faith, trust, and holy favor bore of faith the men of the old, their divine testimony, bore to them and obtained a good report. What that said was that men of old, meaning our fathers in the spirit and the gospel previously, obtained divine testimony and a good report because of faith. How did they obtain a good report? It was their faith. Abraham, it was his faith. So how do we today obtain a good report? It's our faith, and our faith is in the word. When we release the word of God, we stand believing in hopes for him to perform it, his word. Since by faith we understand that the world's during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So that we see what was, what was not made out of the things that are visible. So we know that it was God that created all of those things. So this morning, we want to release the faith, because when you have faith, you have peace. They're sisters. They're like cousins. I call them sisters in my own way. They're sisters. When you have faith, when you have peace, you have faith about a thing. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3 tells us, let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because when peace is ruling, 
That means that other stuff really doesn't shake us if peace is ruling. Because when I have peace, I have faith to believe that God is going to do it. Therefore, I am at peace. Peace in my mind, peace in my spirit, peace in my home, peace in my surroundings. So that means that faith and peace, since they're related, they go together, right? So you can't really have one without the other. So if you don't really have peace, and we're going to go into detail a little bit about peace and peacemaking, but you got to have faith in order to have peace. His word tells us that when you go to a house, before you enter into the house, you speak peace to the house. Because that means that you're carrying peace. So if you're a carrier of peace, when you release peace out of your mouth physically and say, I release peace to this house today, then that peace should then go into that house and cover the house or the building or your job or the store or the school or wherever you are. But then he says, if your peace returns, that means if it gets up, it's left. He says, then you shake off the dust from your feet. Mm -hmm. Which means that, in other words, if they don't want to hear you there or peace is not resting there, then, then you, don't, you don't harbor it. You don't hold on to the fact that peace is not resting there because peace is with you. Peace is with you. So you can have peace and you can change the atmosphere because you have peace. And so if we, if we have that kind of peace, the God kind of peace that says, I'm going to let the peace of God rule in my heart today. I'm going to let the peace of God rule in my home today. I'm going to let the peace of God rule wherever I'm going, even if I'm going to visit somebody, even if I'm going to the store, wherever I'm going, I'm going to let that peace rule. Peace has power. Peace is a warrior. Because the word even says in a, in, a, in a particular context, it said, hold my peace. Because you want to know why? Peace is its own warrior. So you don't even have to get out all of it. I, I could have got out of it. I was like, they, they, these transactions, it's going all different places. I knew it was the enemy. Try to throw up a flag. And, but I said, peace. Be still. Peace. Come on. Peace, 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 peace. The peace of God. The peace of God. That you, you can just say peace. And, and peace, the things that surround you are going to have to obey peace. Because peace is a warrior. See, people try to downplay peace. You know what I'm saying? Anybody ever had something downplayed? <laughs> and people try to downplay peace. But see, we should never downplay peace because peace is a warrior. Peace and faith, they go together. So while I'm believing, I have peace to see God bring forth the very thing that God is going to do, manifest, make it fully manifest. Because I believe that when we release the word of God, that our prayers are already answered. However, when we see in the word, it tells us that there are times where there's a battle going on. And that battle is between heaven, come on, and so it, it's not necessarily directed to us, but there is an indirection, which means that the enemy comes to try and hinder, take away, steal, as he is a thief, what God has said. And so we stand. So this particular portion we need to release to you right now is that the faith of God, we need it. To believe him, to believe his word, believe what he said, and then to release peace over whatever it is we're believing God for this morning. Hey Amen. That's good stuff. How y'all doing? Praise God. I don't know. Do we ever address visitors? Any? Are there any first time visitors as well? I want to do that. All right. Look at that. Welcome. <laughs> That's okay. Welcome to Living Word Church. There, I, I was. Trying to make sure that we made sure that we welcome you guys. Thank you for coming this morning. And uh, we're going to get blessed by the word of God. Go ahead and turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And it's going to be verses 1 through 10. I'm going to 
I'm going to skim through this real quick because there's <laughs> – James doesn't play with these with, with those, who's, whoever he's talking to. He's, he's pretty much a kind of uh, hitting them pretty hard, okay? And so this just came to my spirit as well. When you have no peace, because peace is a warrior. When you have no peace, you start warring against each other. I'm going to say that again. When you have peace, when you have no peace in your life, when you're not letting peace be the fighter, be the one that's fighting for you, you're going to start fighting each other. Woo. Wow. Man. Oh, okay. Ah, all right. Um, <laughs> let's go to uh, verse 1. I read from the New Living Translation, okay? What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil that the desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. I'm going to go back to that part. Um, and, e and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, make sure and you make yourself an enemy of God. What do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the spirit of God has placed within us is filled with envy, but he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desires. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. Okay. Woo. James just said a mouthful, okay? So we're going we're gonna to take this and kind of break it down bit by bit. We're going to go back to verse, verse 2, because he, he's asking, what are causing the quarrels and fights among you? And, and um, I'm looking at this because... As peacemakers, um, we shouldn't be fighting each other, which is pretty logical. But uh, being a peacemaker, you have to see why are we fighting each other? Why? What is causing the strife between each other? And, he's, and, and James is, is addressing the church and asking him this, what is going on? So he's pointing out a few things to the church and saying this is what's going on. It says, it come from the evil desires at war within you. Some, some uh, translations say it's lust. Um, so in verse 2 and 3, it says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have you, what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives, of all, motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So lust is, is a big, big, big thing. We start lusting for things that are desirable but have no benefit to us. Uh, Paul says that not all things are, that are good are beneficial. Not all things that are good are beneficial towards us. So we, we want these things. And then it goes to the next part, envy. You're envying each other because you see that person that has what you want and you want to take it from them because they feel like, you feel like that there is, that they're the problem, that they're the, the reason why you can't get what you want. I looked up in the uh, Webster's Dictionary of the difference between um, jealousy and envy because a lot of times we have to ask ourselves, okay, 
sometimes we can be jealous of, of each other. Um, it can't actually be a good thing in relationships. Uh, even when God says, you know, God says, okay, um, God is a jealous God, right? You guys heard that before? God is a jealous God. There's a difference between that jealousy and envy. So I want to point that out. This is not the same type of thing. So, for example, let's just say my, my wife, um, my wife and I, of course, you know, she we want to go out to the movies and I'm, I'm, I'm at home, you know, playing video games or listening to music and doing other stuff, right? But I'm not giving her attention. So, so then she becomes jealous because I'm not giving her enough attention. That's a, and, that, and that is a, a definition of what jealousy could be, okay? So jealousy, it says jealousy is an unhappy or angry feeling caused by the belief that someone you love, uh, such as your husband or wife, uh, likes or is liked by someone else. So it's pretty much, pretty much saying it's, it's, a, it's you're being an unhappy because they, they are not, paying, not giving you the attention or not prioritizing you. And that's what the same jealousy that God has. When we look at things, and that's what comes back to that lust. He's jealous because we are, we're coming after, we're going after things and putting that thing ahead of, of where God should be. That's the type of jealousy that, that God has. And that's some type of jealousy that you know, your loved ones have, your wife has, your husband has. If we don't give them that attention that they need. And so, then let's go to envy. Okay, this is what, this is what the uh, Webster's Dictionary puts in for envy. Envy is, is it's a painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another, joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. Yeah, that's a lot. Envy is a painful a resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another, joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. So you're saying that, so what is that, what is that saying? It's pretty much what James is saying. <laughs> you, you want what you don't have, so you scheme to kill and kill to get it. And so you, you're, the, this envy is like, I have something that I want, and I see somebody else that has it, and it looks like an advantage to them because they have it and I don't. So I feel like I deserve that. Or you're saying I should be on that stage, or I should be the one that, that is getting a raise or should be getting that promotion on him. I'm, I should be the one that... That is, that is supposed to be um, doing all this. I'm supposed to be the one that, that is uh, uh, getting all this attention and getting all this praise and stuff like that. And how come I'm not getting it because of him? And, and that's, what, that's the difference between jealousy and envy. Um, go ahead, babe. Go ahead, say something. Um, jealousy, the Bible says, is crueler than the grave. God's word says that jealousy is crueler than the grave. And when you look at the world right now, we see so many things in society, social media, all these different things, and you see everybody's comments and all of this stuff that's going on, you see where a lot of jealousy arises from. Um, but when you look at the body of Christ, we should not have that particular type of jealousy in the body of Christ. And I want to give you an example. So, Pastor Paul, when I met him, I knew that the place that he works has both male and females that work there. And he works there all day long. So if I had to take on a job and become Shawnee PD, looking after Pastor Paul, <laughs> come on, come on, church. If I had to take on a job to become Shawnee PD, ooh, Pastor Paul, he's, oh, he's selling a phone to a girl. She looks prettier than I am. Oh, I better go run up in there. That's not what God has called us to do. That's not the kind of life God has called us to live. I married him because I trust him. When I met him, he was an honest man. He was a faithful man when I met him. 
so that therefore jealousy doesn't have any room now that we're married. I need to go take on Inspector Gadget. <laughs> That's not the kind of life that God wants us to live. And, and if somebody walks up to him and says, hello, surely I'm not about to pass out. Oh, somebody said hello to Pastor Paul. I better go run up here because I don't, we don't have time to take on a second and third job. Come on, wives, amen. <laughs> Husbands, amen. I mean, you already have a job. A wife is a job. <laughs> Husband is a job. <laughs> you know, taking care of a family is a yeah, so God has given us wisdom today that these areas, he doesn't want that to inflex, to penetrate the church. Now, we want to use wisdom. You don't want to cross boundaries. You know, you know what a boundary is. You know if somebody's married, you know, or if you don't know, you might better find out, you know. <laughs> but you don't want to cross boundaries, but we want to know that because there's some doctrine that's got into the church that when you read about it, I'm saying... You mean to tell me the disciples now, they chose Stephen to be over a group of widows. I mean, come on, let's, let's walk to the word. They said the widows are being neglected. We need somebody to handle this, basically, area of ministry, if we can put it in our terms today. So they said we need to choose somebody that's faithful that's honest and that's of a good report that we can put over this ministry. So, yeah, and that's full of the Spirit of God. So then they said the lot fell on Stephen, one of them. Now, do you think the disciples running around, oh, Stephen, he, we better go watch the widows. Stephen's been chosen. <laughs> you chose him. They chose a man that they said that was full of the Holy Spirit, that was honest, that was full of integrity. Now, because you have to watch jealousy, it becomes crueler than the grave. People may or may not reach their full potential in life because of jealousy. Yeah. People may or may not be all that God wants them to be. And we're talking about God, who God has called them to be. Isn't that more important than what, uh-oh, we think they should be? Right? even though if they are. So we want to watch and just be aware of what, what is this source? Because and if the source is jealousy, why is there jealousy? That should be the question. Why is there jealousy? Why did that come in? Because if there's no peace, the Bible tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. And so with his love, therefore we have peace. So when I marry Pastor Paul, I know every day, that it's people that call them out. They see us out. Oh, my God, cell phone problems. I'm not about to pass out. We in the store. I'm trying to buy some groceries. Let him fix somebody's phone. You see what I mean? Now, I'm not going to be naive, you know, to certain things. But we have to know where we stand. Surely the blood of Jesus. Surely the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can keep you, right, when you're in the store right? Surely that same power that we say we got can keep your spouse, right? Surely, surely that same power can, 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 can give you a way of escape, like he says, you know, if you're in a situation and it feels funny, you know, everybody know you've been in a funny feeling situation, but so we want God to just open our eyes and our hearts and say, God, is that me? Do I have some type of Jealousy that could be hindering somebody else from fully being who God has called them to be, even if they're in your own house. Because you want them to be free and be who God's called them to be. Now, not too free, because now there's some doctrines out there. You may have heard of them that they're called swingers, you know, stuff that's doctrines that's out there. You know, look it up if you don't know what that is. But um, there's some stuff out there that we want to watch and be aware of, but we don't want to be as cruel as the grave, and that's what jealousy is. Amen. Back to that, too, between uh, um, what James says, and uh, back in verse 2, uh, you, you don't, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You left God out of the whole equation. 
You're desiring something. You're looking at what other people's got. You're looking at what other people have, but you left God out of the equation. God's like, I can, you know, I can bless you even more than that person that you're jealous of. If you just ask me. And then it goes into that. He didn't just leave it at that. He said, even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You, <laughs> you want only what will give you pleasure. And, and, and times where we have to check our hearts even when we pray to God. If we're praying from a, even a, with a jealous heart, we have to watch out. We have to be careful. We have to be careful because it's like, it's like, okay, you're praying, I wanted this because he's got it. Oh, you know, <laughs> and it's a good example seeing my kids because they, they like to, they don't like sharing, let's just say that, with the toys. And uh, I had to break up a couple of fights, of course, a few times a day because, you know, they're kids. They're kids. And so God is looking at us like that as well. It's like, okay, you want this and that, but, you know, where, where are your motives at? Where is your heart at? Are you really needing this? Is this something that, that is really going to be beneficial to you? And so if we know that, if we, if we truly believe, it goes back to what Shailene was saying, having faith in God and believing on who God is, then we can know what he wants for us. We can know what his, what his desire is for us, and he will not leave us out. So envy is, is an illusion. It, it brings out an illusion to, to, uh, to tell us that, oh, I can't. I, I, don't, I can't get what they have because, because of this and that. And it's, it's, it can give us an illusion. It can deceive us if we're not, if we're not careful. So we, we have to watch out for that. And, uh, and the next step is, is uh, worldliness. He was pretty much saying, um, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? And this is pretty much, it kind of ties everything together. It's, it's the worldliness that the church has now because we're trying to outdo each other. We want to be the next whoever or, you know, the, the next uh, big preacher or big, uh, big person in town or, or, or this and that. But don't you understand that that's a form of worldliness because it's a lack of faith, a lack of believing that God can do this for me. And so you're looking at other, other people and you're comparing yourself to other people. That is so dangerous. That is so dangerous. You don't want to compare yourself to other people. Because you don't know what they had to go through to get what they're at right now. You don't understand the storms and all the pain and the struggle that they had to go through. For God to bless them like that. So don't compare yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. When you see big people that have a, a larger platform with you, uh, a, a larger platform than you, and, and you look at them and say, I should be there. I should be that person right there. You have to be very careful because you don't understand the struggle, what got them there, the, 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 the trials and, and, and all the different things that, that have got to where they're at. So don't get caught up in that illusion of, of, of envy and, and comparing yourself to others. And so that's what James is saying there. Go ahead. Um, with, with comparison, when you look at, he, he responded and he said, um, you people are jealous or they're envious, but they didn't ask God for the thing that they need. And when you look, the Bible tells us that gifts are given by God freely. God gives to us freely. He's given us these gifts. And, and what gifts are we talking about when we're talking about the church? Maybe, maybe you have a gift of hospitality. Maybe you have a gift of playing an instrument. Maybe you have a gift of cooking. Maybe you have a gift of creativity. Maybe you have a gift of technology in some area, really good. Maybe you have gift in business areas. Maybe you have a gift to preach. Maybe you have a gift to encourage someone. Maybe you have the gift to teach. Maybe you have the gift to prophesy. Maybe you have a gift to manage things well, to be a good steward. And stewarding is, is a great gift as well. And so maybe you have one of these gifts, but who is the gift giver? God is our gift giver, regardless of whatever your gift is. God's the gift giver. So therefore, if we desire a gift, if we have a desire, then that should be God. You are the gift giver. You know, when we look at each other and we're saying, look where God, look how far God has brought us. 
Man, I know that when we get together with our pastors, I'm like, man, I know somebody's praying. Somebody's going to be speaking a word. Somebody's going to be giving us some encouragement. Somebody's going to be saying something. And I'm excited about getting with them because I know all of these gifts are there when we come together. So when we look at those gifts and we look at the church as a whole and we say, wow, when you, when you come in the door, you've got to usher somebody that's got the gift in ushering. Or when you see somebody that they're a greeter and they're greeting you, that's a gift. When you come, come in and we got food to eat at some occasion or event, somebody's cooked that, somebody's prepared that. Normally, somebody that's got a gift to do it, right? Normally, or if, when you come into service today, we were led by awesome and awesome praise team. Amen. Great. Awesome. And so everybody, all of them, they have gifts. And so God has given us gifts to use all for his glory. So the gift giver is God. So if there's a gift and you're in here today and you're saying, God, I want this particular gift. I want that. I remember um, when I was in college, I used to ask God. I used to see our spiritual leaders at the time that were mentoring us. I see them writing big checks for offering. And I was like, man, I was like, I want to accuse you. You know, we're in college. And I'm like, I want to write some checks to God one time. I want to be able to give God a good offering, you know, and then, but see, who did I ask for it? I wasn't envious of them. I asked God, and therefore, God will bless you to do that. So, the gift giver is God. The gift giver is God. The credentials, all of that, it's God. See, Jesus's credentials is that he heals the sick, he raised the dead, he cast out devils, All of those things are infallible proofs. That's his credentials. You know, um, when people look at us, they think, oh, it's a young couple, you know, but they don't know that we learned to pray 17 years ago. We learned about fasting. We learned about hearing God's voice 17 years ago. We learned about seeing breakthrough 17 years ago. We learned about fighting along the way. See, we're, as leaders, we're just like you. We fight, we war too. We, we encounter life, too. I think sometimes people try to make it seem superficial in a way, like, oh, their pastors are leaders. They don't face anything. No, we had to walk through almost everything that you guys have had to walk through, whether, whether it be financial, whether it be a death, whether it be, you know, whatever the life situation is, we had to face that as well. So these gifts, they all come from God, and he is the gift giver. So when he gives us these gifts, then we honor him with them and say, God, these are really your gifts. And at any point in time, he could actually take the gift. But you've given us the gift, so we want to use it right, and we want to use it for your glory. So whatever gift you have today, think about it. Just think in your minds, what do I have? What have you given me that I can use? There's plenty of places here in ministry that you can be planted in and that you can use your gifts. So if you've thought about something, please get with, you know, one of our pastors, one of our leaders, because there's areas that you can be used if you have those gifts, because they're given by God. And we want to see him glorified. We want to see those gifts used. Yeah, and every gift is significant. Every gift is significant. Yeah. So it's, you cannot duplicate what somebody else has done because God didn't create you to duplicate somebody. God did not create copies. He's, he created everybody to be an original. So find out, you come, come before God, ask yourself, who, who am I? What do you want me to be? And, and, he, and he, he will start revealing that self to you, you know, day by day. And, and it takes, it takes um, it's a process that you have to have because it requires, first of all, it requires humility. Uh, the first, and, and, and verse 7, it says, humble yourselves before God. Um, other translations say, submit yourselves before God. And I think every time I think of submit because, you know, I watch, uh, USC fighting matches at times where a person has to tap, you know, to tap out, you know, if you, if you got them in a, in, a, in a hold that that can't be out. And so I like, look, look, I just, it's just that point. It's like, you know what, God, you win. You, you're God. Just knowing your place. Humble yourselves before God. Okay? The next one, and he says, resist the devil and he will flee. If, we, if you see what a if you see where the devil is, if you see that, if you see what what he's doing, it all comes back to humbling yourself before the Lord, knowing that, seeing the enemy, where the enemy is at, and there has to be a resistance. It's got to be a fight, a fight back. Like it's like, look, I'm not going to go there. I know that you know that people are saying this and that. It's like you know you should be this because there's times too 
when people are telling you things, when people whisper stuff into your ear, oh, you should be that one that's doing that. You know, you got to watch out those little seeds that the enemy will try to put and, and try to sneak up, you know, under your desk. You have to watch out for that too. And it's like, wait a minute, no. I'm going to humble myself before God because pride, pride is, I think pride is the biggest enemy of God. God cannot, God cannot use a prideful heart. And I think that's really the basis of all the things that James is talking about. He just said, God, the words that scripture says, God opposes, opposes the proud, but favors the humble. God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. Pride is what kicked Lucifer out of heaven. Pride is what made King Saul lose his kingdom with David. Pride is such a, is such a dangerous thing. And that's what caused even King Saul, that he, he was jealous of David because he knew that he messed up. He knew that he messed up when, when he decided to not listen to what God, God commanded. And he decided to he take pride, took pride because I'm the king of Israel, so I'm either going to do it my own way or listen to wise counsel. He lost his anointing, and, and the, the prophet Samuel told Saul, you lost your kingdom. You don't know, you know, God is, you know, God is going to take pretty much <laughs> the dynasty away from you because of your disobedience. And that was the root, the root of that was his pride. And, and it led to jealousy. He was so jealous of David. He saw the way that God blessed David, how God's favor was on David. And, and even was the icing of the cake, you know. He, it was like a, when people started singing, you know, it was like Saul kills his thousands, but David kills his ten thousands. You know, that was like a diss track if you're looking at like hip hop or something like that. But that was like a, that was that was he was pretty much that just bowled him over. I mean, he he wanted he was so jealous, he was so envious of David that he wanted him dead, and he wanted him hunted down and killed. And David was running for his life to try to avoid King Saul. But David was so humble. This is so crazy how, how so humble he was. Even when Saul wanted him hunted down, he still honored King Saul. He still honored his position because God put him there as king. And so when even when people do things or plot evil against you, when people, when people do things against you, there's still humility that's required. And God honors that. God honors that. And, and um, even, even on the other side of envy, a lot of times when, when you feel like you should feel guilty for what God has blessed you with, people will try to, try to do that. They will try to make you feel bad. They will try to put that, that wet blanket on you. <laughs> I was like, what is this? You know, they try to make you feel guilty for the things that God's giving you. Wait a minute. Hold on. What is going on here? Why am I why am I feeling bad for for doing for for doing this? Why am I feeling bad for for succeeding and and, and all this stuff? So you've got to see where the enemy has put that at. And it's like, wait a minute, resist that, resist it, just just resist it. But at the same time, stay humble. So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And then then it says, draw closer to God. Come close. Come close to God. Come close. There is a drawing. There's a drawing that comes near. When, when, as peacemakers, we are to, to draw close. Draw close to God. Because a lot of times we can go astray with all these illusions that, that was what was early in there, the, the, the worldliness, the lust, the envy. We can get drawn away. It's like a ship without a sail. We just don't, we just have no direction on where we're going. And it's like, you know what? Lord, I just want to come close to you. Bring me near to you. Bring me near to your heart. And I know we've all experienced that. There was times where, where we felt there were, there were certain times where we get lost astray. And that's perfect because we're human. I know I had several times where <laughs> even as, as an artist, as a musician, a lot, a lot of times we feel like we're not where, where, where we're supposed to be. 
and we when we look at others that are succeeding and looking at others how you know they, they're getting this and they're succeeding in that and you know their song is really great I'll come you know I wish I could write a song that 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 was just like that you know and, and there is and it's such an illusion that that draws us away but a lot of people don't understand that when you come close to God when there, when you are so when, you, when there's a drawing near to God it brings out such a refreshing to to your anointing it brings out such refreshing to that that it gets it gets rid of all those illusions it's like you know what I'm just going to be who I am in Christ I'm going to be who I am in God because that is what brings out your true identity as a peacemaker you know that who I am in Christ knowing who I am in God I don't have to worry about all this stuff I don't have to be I don't have to worry about what the world has to worry about I mean come on they're living in a lack of peace there because they're so concerned about what the about what the other person is going to do, about somebody taking over or somebody uh, trying to take their spot. And there's always an uneasiness. They're always living in, in, in the hastiness. There's always has to be on top. But we don't have to worry about that in the in the Christian community. Why? Because we are humbling ourselves. We are looking towards each other. We're helping each other out. We are exalting God. We are coming close to God because we all know who we are as, as, as people, as peacemakers, as, as Christians. That we can say, hey, I'm here for you. And I love you. <laughs> and the word says, love one another. And that's that love, just knowing that your gift is so significant. Each and every person has a significant gift. And it doesn't drown out the other. And it doesn't over, overtake the other. In fact, God is like, we, we're, um, Peter says that we are building stones. And we are building stones, and each stone is made for a specific purpose. And when we work together in the purpose that God has placed us in, then we encourage each other. We build each other up. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful to be a part of that community? To be a part of, the, of that, of, of what God has for us? So if we, are, if we are called to be peacemakers, in fact, even Pastor Josh was talking last week, he said, bless all the peacemakers, for they should be called the sons of God. And that's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. That pretty much identifies us of who we are in Christ, when we are walking in peace. And we're creating that piece. On um, a couple of weeks ago, my husband and I, we were led to go to a previous ministry that we attended. We were a, a, a lot younger, excuse me, tongue twister, tongue twister. Um, and the reason why we went there is because we needed to go back and we needed to have some closure. We need to be peacemakers. Yeah. Um, there's times in each and every person's life in here, you know, you can think of a time where you need to say, you know what? That that right there just wasn't even right at all, and or the way that was that was carried out wasn't right, and we went back to say we were sorry, we went back to say, you know, as far as for our part and what we had in it, we needed to say we were sorry, and there's times in our lives that we need to say we're sorry. We need to be the peacemakers. We need to be the ones to say, you know what? Even though this may have happened this many years ago, we want to make sure that you know that we are, we are at peace. We want to make sure that we, you know, we know we're asking you for forgiveness. And even if it doesn't have to be years ago, maybe it was a couple of days ago for you. You know, maybe it was something that you need to say, you know what, this, this thing, you know, that causes a division, we want to make sure that we're the peacemakers, that we are who you've called us to be, and that people will then recognize that we are the children of God because we're making peace. And so who are we today as a church? Where are we going? When we think about our mantra, one of our mantras, it says, we are contending for a new reformation, the power of God for a new generation, creating a place where God can come down so people can experience his life-changing power through Christ Jesus, a place of prayer where people can cry out to God for an outpouring of his spirit, yes, a place where the totally 
of God's, totally of God's word is preached, changing and transforming people to become passionate followers of Jesus Christ. A place of worship, giving to God what he deserves. We give joyful, exuberant praise with our hearts and bodies, going beyond the four walls of the church and aggressively bringing God to a lost, blind, and hurting world. And that's our vision. That's one of our visions. That's one of our mantras. That's where we're going. So how do we get there? Then, then we lay aside jealousy. And the Bible tells us to lay aside every weight that can easily be sent us. Then we lay aside anything that is not pleasing to God. And then how do we do that? When we get in our word, it's like those things just fall off of you. It's like you don't have a desire for some of those things. So where do we go today as a body? We want to focus in on our vision. Cause So can you stand with us, please? We want to focus in on our vision. Where are we going? What's in our hearts? We want the fruit of the Spirit. If you can stand, if you can't, it's okay. We, the fruits of the Spirit, we want those to be in us. We want the love of God to show and, and to come out, pour out of us. We want to reach this generation. We want to be followers of Christ. We want to be all that we can be. We want, our, we want to give God the praise that he deserves. Because he's worthy. He's a good God. And we want to give him all that he's due. That's all of our praise. That's all of our giftings. We want to give that back to him. We want to be used by him. We want to release the faith of God to believe him, to do everything that he said he's going to do. Yep. So we can just think about those things today and say, God, I know we have all of these issues, but I still give you the praise that you deserve. I still give you the worship that you deserve. Yes, I'm still going to encourage somebody today. I'm still going to pray for somebody today. I'm still going to find somebody that I can reach out to and tell them about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And there's some, yeah. <clears throat> there's a couple of things that um, I haven't, there's an artist, I don't know if you heard of him. His name is KB, but he put something on, on uh, Twitter that really hit it home for me. He said that everybody wants to play either the hero or the victim. He said, we need more people to play the repenter. He said, everybody wants to play the hero or the victim. <laughs> but we need more people to play the repenter. Yeah. So it, it comes to repentance. And, and, and the, the last part, in, in uh, James chapter 4, he says, purify your hearts and repent. <laughs> and in a lot of scriptures, uh, versions that says repent. And, and the repent is like, you know, just it's pretty much to think again. We think, we think those illusions of lust, those desires, it's like, you know, we, we need to repent. We need to rethink. It's, it's, it's like a spiritual detox. And that's when revival starts. That's when revival starts. When we come and we repent and say, Lord, I was thinking wrong. I was wrongfully thinking. And, and uh, the Lord told me the other day, even when we went to, that, went to the church and apologized, it was, he was just saying, God wants revival in Shawnee, but he doesn't want it on our own terms and conditions. He doesn't want it on our own terms and conditions. There's something that we have to give up. There's something that we have to give away in order to have revival, whether it be our time, whether it be the other things that we focus on. What is it that we can give away in order to have revival? That's what Peacemaker is. When, he, when, when we come and lay our, uh, put our guards down and say, look, I just want peace. And, and we just said, you know what, we, we apologize for anything, any turmoil that we have caused. Because that's a, you don't understand, that's a reputation that you have. People don't understand the reputations that they have because they're so caught up in themselves that you don't, they don't see how they are affecting others. It's like, what good of reputation would we have if we have a quarrel with somebody else? A quarrel with another pe person that is, that is anointed and called to be that. That's why it's so important to be peacemakers. Because it is such a... It, it leaves a reputation behind, even, even throughout eternity, and, and it echoes in eternity for the things that we do and say to each other. And so we have to watch it. We have to watch our mouths. But, but God is, 
He's wanting us to draw close to him as well. That there's a drawing close to him, and, and, and it requires a humble, humble, you know, humility. It, co- it requires us to give away something. So the question is, what are you wanting to give away? What are you willing to give away? Yeah, I want, I want everybody to, to come to the front. And let's speak this over us. Let's speak this over this church, this community. And let's ask ourselves, let's say, Lord, what am I willing to give up for revival to come? Will it be my pride? <laughs> Will it be my lustful desires? Would it, would it be just even my, my ego? That the fact that I may embarrass myself or, or people will, would laugh at me or what will people think if I did this or that? You know, there's, there's a shell that we have to break out of. And we have to come out of that shell in order for God to come down. It took Jesus to become God in the flesh and live a full life and live a sinless life. And it caused him to give his own life away so that we can experience the freedom that our God our Father wanted for us. And that freedom is through the Holy Spirit that he left us when he ascended back to heaven and resurrected. That Holy Spirit, listen listen to the Holy Spirit. I just want to challenge you guys. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. What are some things that I need to put away? It could be simple things. It could be Facebook. It could be video games. It can be just things that are wasting my time. You know, what are some things that, 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 God, has re- that, that um, God has wanted me to do proactively? Who are some people that I can call and say, I'm sorry? Who are some people that say, hey, let's go out, let's go out and eat and, and, you know, let's talk. It's been a while that we, we've done this, you know. And the Father is just... Hmm. I want everybody to just lift their hands. Lift your hands. Father, we give ourselves away. Yes. We give ourselves away, God, that you can use us. Yes. That you can use us, God, that we can be used by you, God. We, we decrease that you can increase in us, God. Let this day be life-changing. Let this day be explosive. Let this day, God, be what you called it to be in us, God. Let there be a fresh revelation, a fresh wisdom, God, coming to us, God. Open our eyes like never before, God. Open our ears like never before, God. That that may be something we didn't see before we're seeing today. Something we didn't think about before we're thinking about it now, God. Something that we needed to act on before and we haven't, but we're acting on it today, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We give ourselves a way that you can use us. And if there's anything, God, that's in us, anything that's not like you, God, we renounce it now, God. Yes. Yes. In any type of jealousy, any type of envy, any type of strife, God, anything that would hold us back from fully representing you, Jesus. We want to be representatives of you, God. That when people see us, they see you. We want to allow time for ministry, so we would ask for our prayer team and our prayer warriors, as well as our pastors, to please feel free and, and, and go through the altar area and, and pray for those that need prayer. If there's anything that you need prayer about, because part of our vision is to see the power of God revealed, and that is to flow in the power of God. That means that you can, you can hear, you can get a one-on-one prayer, you can get a one-on-one word from God. So if you're here and you need a prayer for a specific thing, please allow our prayer warriors, our pastors to pray with you, pray for you. Or if you have someone that you're praying for, we want to open up this time right now for ministry and allow God to move in such a way that is life-changing because he is a life-changer. He's the deliverer and he is the victor. Therefore, he is victorious and we are victorious.
Jesus, in Jesus. Mighty Jesus. I see a two-year, I see a two-year preparation for you too. A two-year preparation, and um, don't really know what that means. All I can say is there's a two-year preparation there. So, Father God, we just lift up Joey and Paige, God. You know what that means. So, God, you know what you're doing in their lives to prepare them for where they're going, God, career-wise, personally, in their marriage. So, God, we just ask for your favor, your wisdom, just a flow of your Holy Spirit over them, God, that you would just reveal to them everything that they need, that you would give them the tools that they need, Father, for preparation, Father. We just give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. 